Hello and welcome to the first section of our course. In this section, we will talk about the serverless architecture and what are the AWS services that are serverless. We will discuss at first what is serverless, what are the benefits of using it, how it's different from non-serverless solution, and once we establish what is serverless, we can go and look at the AWS services and define what are serverless and what our services are not serverless. And then we will go to what is the AWS Lambda function, probably one of the most common serverless services that AWS offer us. And the first video will be this video and we will discuss why serverless is so popular. So we will define what is serverless and we will see the difference between serverless and non-serverless services. In front of you, you have a general web architecture within AWS. And we will go now into this architecture and try to, to define two things. One, what kind of maintenance do I need to do? And what kind of decision-making we need to do with this architecture? And we're doing this so we could understand better what is the difference between serverless and non-serverless. Of course, what you see in front of you now, it's a non-serverless solution. So we have four components here. We have the RDS, EC2 instance, auto-scaling and load balancer. So let's review each and one of them. The first one is the EC2 instances, which is Elastic Cloud Compute. This is a simple virtual machine in the cloud. So I'm going to ask you a question. When was the last time you run a security update in your production virtual machines? My guess is been a long time. And I understand that because making change in your production environment is something that you're afraid of doing that because it might affect your production environment. So we're trying to postpone changes. So this is the kind of maintenance that we need to have with our in situ instances, doing updates, changing configuration, installing packages, things like that. So this is the maintenance part. The second thing that we want to discuss is what kind of decision making we need to do. So when you launch an instance, Amazon is going to ask you a very, very important question. Which instance type do you want? Instance type actually means how much CPU, memory, disk size, network capabilities do you want to have in your instance? Do you want two cores, four cores, eight cores, how many memory? So why this decision is so important? Because when you are going to go to production, your application is going to meet the load from your customers and those EC2 instances need to meet the load. If you are having an under-provisioned resources, customers are going to face that your application cannot meet the load, which affect your production environment. Or you have over-provisioned resources, meaning you're simply wasting money. So choosing the right instance type is critical. The second thing that I want to talk about is auto-scaling. What is auto-scaling? Auto-scaling is a great tool. This is the tool that going to monitor your application load and decide how many EC2 instances you're going to have. So let's assume your application usually runs with four instances and now you have some campaign you ran and you have a lot of requests to your application. So you're going to want to launch more instances. This is the auto-scaling job. To do that, you need to know when to scale. And this is a very difficult question to answer because the first you need to, to understand which parameter you are going to monitor. Are you going to monitor network? Are you going to monitor CPU? And let's assume you chose CPU. What is the threshold to launch another instance? 50% CPU, 60% CPU. And again, if you have made a wrong decision here, you are going to launch an instance too late, meaning that your customer has got some error from your application. And when you're launching an instance, the instance needs to be ready to get requests, to handle requests, because it needs to have the right operation system, the right configuration, the right packages installed, the latest code installed, and everything needs to be ready. So you need to create an image ready to receive traffic. So this is another maintenance thing that you need to take care of. The load balancer is the tool that receives requests and spread it across all of your EC2 instances. So there is no much of maintenance to do. You need to know something about networking, but it's not something that 
is complicated, and here you have nothing to do related to scaling, which is awesome. The RDS, Relational Database Service, so this is a managed service that has some relational database within it. It could be MSSQL, MySQL, Postgres, Oracle, anything that you want. And this is a managed service, which means that AWS are taking care of backup, updates, availability, all of the things that we need to maintain usually, because it's a managed service, it's AWS responsibility. But we still need to make an important decision. When we chose the EC2 instance, we chose which type do we want. In the RDS, we need to do that as well. So in this architecture, it's a great architecture. It can serve millions of requests and it's scaling and it's resilient and it's high available and it's a great, great, great architecture. But we need to make a decision and we need to make maintenance, which means that there is a lot of plays to human errors. And this is the kind of thing that we want to avoid because people do make mistakes and when they do mistakes, our production environment simply doesn't work. So what is serverless? For me, this is a simple two key factors that I want to have in a service to call it a serverless. The first one is that I don't have maintenance to do. Simply AWS does it for me. And the second thing, I don't want to be responsible for scaling. It's AWS responsibility. Scaling with cloud could sound like something that you simply do, but there is a lot of thinking to this process and a lot of decision making and a lot of things that you learn as you go. And this learning may cost with production issues. So if it's AWS responsibility to handle that, that's much better for us. So now what we have in front of us is the same general web architecture that we saw before, but utilizing serverless services. So instead of RDS, we have DynamoDB, which is a serverless service. And the Lambda function is replacing our EC2. And the API gateway, well, it's replacing, I would say, the load balancer. And this is the component that exposes our code to the outside world. So Lambda function is going to invoke our code. It's going to launch and run our code. This is a function. It has an input and an output, and there is no maintenance and there is no scaling. Just upload your code and it's running. And with DynamoDB, so there is no maintenance and you don't have to choose an instance type, you simply run it. An API gateway, well, we had the auto scaling before and we don't have anything to do. So this is an architecture that is able to serve millions of clients and doesn't rely on people to maintain it and making the right decision. So it's far more resilient for human errors. So this was our video to understand what is serverless and why it is so good. And I hope you saw the difference between serverless and non-serverless. In the next video, we're going to review what AWS has to offer us in the serverless field.